Hi everyone, I'm Niels and today I'll be presenting my project on the comparative analysis of EEG-based sound location decoding between real and virtual listening conditions. So when I refer to virtual listening, I'm talking about the use of head-related transfer functions, HRTFs. HRTFs simulate how sound interacts with the human morphology, essentially allowing us to recreate how sound travels from a source to the listener's ears. On the right, we can see how HRTFs are measured in our lab, and this involves capturing the transfer function from a speaker to the ear at various locations, thereby modelling how sound interacts uniquely with an individual's morphology. And these transfer functions can then be applied to audio to stimulate sounds from different directions in a virtual environment. So this technology is used in creating immersive 3D auditory environments for virtual reality, augmented reality, consumer audio products like certain headphones, and also hearing aids. However, HRTFs are highly individual because each person's morphology is unique. So when we use someone else's HRTF or non-individual HRTFs, we experience spatial inaccuracies. A particularly common problem here is front-back confusions, where a sound intended to be rendered behind the listener is perceived as coming from the front, and sometimes vice versa. Typically, behavioural measures such as localization tests are used to assess the efficacy of HRTFs. In these tests, subjects indicate where they perceived certain sounds to be coming from with different HRTF sets, either in virtual reality or on a 2D display. And the error in localization is compared between HRTF sets. However, these measures have limitations. They can be unreliable, non-repeatable, and they exclude certain groups such as younger children, or individuals who are unable to provide behavioural feedback. So to address these limitations, EEG-inspired objective measures of spatial auditory perception have been proposed, with recent studies looking at quantifying the perception of externalisation and immersion in binaural listening using EEG. However, an intriguing approach within this realm of neural-inspired metrics of spatial auditory perception is sound location decoding. Here, the location of a heard sound source is decoded based solely on neural data. Specifically, these approaches record evoked response potentials while subjects listen to stimuli from various locations. And then classification models are trained to discern between pairs of locations. And variations in the decoding accuracy between location pairs is compared. On the right here is a plot of a typical ERP at a single electrode with some stereotypical regions that are often investigated and marked, such as the P100, N100, P200, etc. However, the advantage of decoding approaches is that they consider the whole ERP, and this potentially makes them more sensitive to subtle variations in the neural response. So previous research has explored decoding sound source location for free field listening, so using loudspeakers, our research aims to extend this to non-individual HRTF listening, with the hope of finding differences in decoding accuracy between free field and virtual listening as an initial step towards an EEG-based measure of localization accuracy. So we ask, can we achieve significant decoding for virtual listening? Is there a difference in decoding accuracy between real and virtual listening for the same location pairs? And does this decoding accuracy difference correlate with behavioural front-back confusions? So to investigate this, we conducted an EEG experiment where six subjects sat in a loudspeaker dome and listened to sounds from four locations, one in each quadrant. And these were symmetrical around the median plane and interaural planes. The sounds were presented through loudspeakers or rendered binaurally by headphones with non-individual HRTFs. And here we used an adapter PO paradigm for presenting stimuli. So participants first heard white noise from eight locations in the horizontal plane simultaneously for a second, and then they switched to a specific location, one of these four quadrants, for 100 milliseconds. And this method serves to isolate the, the sound location change response from the general sound onset response. 125 trials at each of these four locations were recorded for each spatial condition. And we also gathered behavioural data in that subjects indicated on a number pad which quadrant they perceived the sound to be coming from when they were prompted after the probe by a pure tone. And this is so we could compare uh, decoding accuracy between pairs of locations and behavioural localization accuracy. We recorded 64 channel EEG and obtained ERPs by extracting 600 millisecond windows post probe onset from each electrode. And we then trained a support vector machine 
to classify between pairs of sound locations which were symmetrical around either the median plane or the interaural plane based on these ERPs. And then we compare the decoding accuracy between spatial locations and conditions. And here are the results. So this plot shows the decoding accuracies for each of the six subjects, the different spatial locations and spatial conditions. And on this plot, the box plots are grouped by spatial location. So in the first box plot group, we can see box plot statistics of the decoding accuracies for the six participants for the front left and back left decoding, for the virtual or non-individual HRTF listening in the blue, and the real or loudspeaker listening in the green. The next group shows us the front right versus back right decoding. The group after that shows us the front right versus front left decoding. And finally, the last box plot group shows us back left versus back right locations. And interestingly, the results reveal that there is a significant decoding disparity for interaural plane symmetric locations. So the decoding accuracy for front left and back left sources is significantly lower for HRTF conditions compared to free field listening. And the same holds for front right and back right positions. However, decoding accuracy for medium plane symmetric sources, so opposite hemispheres, is comparable across conditions. And these findings align with common perceptual reports of front back locations being confused more often for uh, non-individual HRTF listening compared to medium plane symmetric sources rarely being confused. And furthermore, these results seem to align with our behavioral data. So here these two plots show the front back confusions for front left versus back left positions on the left plot and front right versus back right positions on the right plot with the coding accuracy for each of these subjects on the x-axis like we saw in the previous plot. And we can see that there's a negative correlation between behavioral confusions and decoding accuracy. So in other words, with when a subject confuses locations more often, it seems that the decoding accuracy between those locations is lower. So to conclude, we found that the decoding accuracy for medium plane symmetric locations is comparable between real and virtual contexts, but decoding accuracy for virtual sources symmetrical around the interaural plane was significantly lower than for real sources. And this aligns with common perceptual reports of confusions between front and back locations, and our behavioral data further supports this. Now, our study involved six participants, so it's very much preliminary, but we're currently conducting a larger scale study to further validate these findings. And in future work, we'll be investigating whether um, a similar approach can also inform the augmentation of virtual spatial cues to enhance spatial auditory perception.